Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Now this was a video that uh, I've been asked, I think, many times for the last few months to produce. Um, so let's jump right into it. So what we're gonna be talking about today is just my general vehicle loadout. And these are the things I have in the Jeep about 95% of the time. There's some items that come in and out. So let's get started. The first thing I've done since I have a two-door Jeep JK is I removed the back seat. There's no value in having that back seat. And then I primarily keep most of the items in two totes uh, from Home Depot. Uh, one is the uh, XL and then the double XL. And then I have them tied down with bungee cords, which aren't great. Um, I do have some tie downs that I can use, but I'm not planning on rolling the Jeep. So let's start with the contents here and then um, we'll jump to some of the contents um, inside the Jeep. All right. Now this first tote is very specific to how I use it. Um, I do a lot of backpacking, hiking, uh, and camping. So I primarily always keep my uh, gear here. Uh, but the pieces that may be valuable to everybody is to have a inexpensive ground cover. Um, this is just a $2 tarp or a free tarp that I got from Harbor Freight. Uh, so shelters would be a great option here. Ground cover and even protecting the Jeep if I need to haul something. And then the next one here are a good pair of walking shoes or hiking boots. And you know there are situations where I may have to go into the office or we're going out to dinner and I'm wearing dress shoes. And if I ever have to walk anywhere, I'm gonna to want to have a good pair of boots. And I've got a couple pairs of wool socks inside. The other item here is a good military surplus wool blanket. This is from Poland. It's an 80-20 blend. So it's 80% wool, 20% synthetic material, and it is super warm and comfortable. Uh, my wife's uh, car kit video also has this. There's some other items in there, like my tent and a quilt, uh, lantern, things like that, but I don't think it really concerns everybody. All right, so this, is, this next item is one of those things that um, comes and goes. So if I ever have to travel into the desert, like just to hit a Jeep trail or any more than like, you know, 50 miles, I typically have this piece of kit here. And uh, check your local laws, but since I'm in the state of Arizona, the way that I'm transporting this is 100% legal as of this filming. All right, so the first thing I have here is my Veritas 500 uh, plate carrier. I have three 30 round P mags, and this is just enough to have a little bit of armor, just the front plate only, and a mechanism to do a loadout. Um, I also typically have a good belt uh, but this is just a uh, HSGI taco. It's got the double mag pouch. This is designed to be worn on the belt. I have another 30 round magazine and then a full size pistol mag for my six hour. All right, and then last but not least, I have a small AR-15 pistol. I do like the size. I like that it compacts down. I've got uh, backup sights, front and rear. Um, I do have an older EOTech on here. Um, I do like the EOTechs because they do have the, the donut of death, which is kind of cool. Um, and then I also have a MS3 sling, so I can wear this legally just by putting it on the sling. All right, uh, here's an inexpensive two and a half gallon gas tank. Um, you know, this is not designed to get me uh, back out in the trails. The ultimate plan actually is to mount I replace the stock bumper with an LOD bumper, and uh, they've got uh, mounting brackets for jerry cans, so I'm probably gonna get two five gallon jerry cans. But for right now, just the ability for me to walk to the gas station and have a couple gallons is all I need. All right, since I'm in the desert, um, I like to have plenty of water or water options. This is a three gallon water brick. Uh, we actually use this as our primary water storage inside the house. And right now it's empty, um, so I still have the ability to, uh, you know, hit a spigot and fill it up. But if I'm doing like a cross-state road trip like we just did, this thing absolutely gets filled up. And it's also good if you're, the radiator overheats. All right, guys, so uh, same thing along those lines. I always carry 
uh, a gallon of, of water. And let's go into this next tote. Okay, so uh, first things first, uh, I've got a small hand shovel. It's not terribly expensive. I think this was maybe $12 at the Home Depot. And since I have the Jeep, um, it's kind of nice to get yourself out of a pickle if you can't with four wheel drive. Um, I do just have a mallet. Um, you know, it's lightweight. There's no reason not to have one in here. And then I built myself a really inexpensive starter kit for uh, my tools. So this primarily has a variety of cutting tools, screwdrivers, socket wrench. Um, it's got a few things that I'm going to pull out. I'm not gonna go through, through everything. So I do have a reflective vest, an extra repair kit for the tires, Some really cheap Harbor Freight uh, gloves, just in case I have to do any work. Uh, the go bags typically have nicer mechanic gloves. Uh, but the one thing I do like to keep in here is a saw, and I would say more than any tool, I use this quite a bit. And this is primarily on the trail to remove branches. So the next piece of kit, I actually, uh, we traded in my wife's uh, VW, uh, but we kept the uh, roadside assistant bag. Uh, so this has jumper cables, gloves, road flare, small first aid kit. Um, so just the ability for us to jump the car uh, if needed. Uh, this is a piece of kit that's probably going to be replaced at some point with a better system to uh, air up the tires again. This is a really inexpensive pump. And then I do keep um, about 25 feet of uh, extension cord. So I'm limited to where I can use this, but um, I have used it to just kind of uh, air up the tire a few PSI if needed. I have some extra tie down straps just in case. In terms of protection from the elements, I have an extra hat and a super lightweight waterproof jacket. I've got some ear pros since I am carrying uh, some type of firearm with me at all times, if not multiple firearms. And then this is the uh, get home bag that's always in here. This was the first one I built. It's an old backpack. It's not very tactical looking. Um, so if I don't have my go bag with me, um, I will almost always have my EDC, but this is just a really nice way to kind of have um, always something I keep in the car that never moves. Um, and I don't know, maybe I'll do a dump of this someday, but it's pretty similar to um, the go bags I've talked about in the past. It's just very slimmed down to the basics. So if you want to dump on that, put some comments below. That would be super appreciated. All right. Uh, so the next thing too, again, I'm a big proponent of the Second Amendment. I do have a Tuffy lockbox. I've got a couple things in here. Uh, first is a uh, Gerber strong arm. It's just another uh, fixed blade knife to have with me. <coughs> a small Kydex ho holster. Um, what I like about this Kydex holster is that I have kind of standardized on the Glock 43 and Glock 43X. So my carry pistol works nicely here. It also works nicely with my 43X. <clears throat> all right, so all I have in there is again, another older holster. This isn't a great one. I'll probably use uh, that Kydex one or my carry one. And then I have three extra 10 round magazines. Uh, so I will tell you, for those of you who have uh, Jeeps, this Tuffy lock box is just amazing. Um, it's something I highly recommend. So inside, let's start with the, uh, I guess the, the front seat. 
So in the cargo door, I actually have for this specific time in, in life, a bottle of hand sanitizer, full size bottle, disinfectant wipes. So this is just the mechanism for me to keep clean. And then I always have an umbrella just on the, that side cargo pouch. Under the driver's seat, um, I have a small uh, dual band ham radio. I picked up this case at a ham fest for I think like eight bucks. And it's perfect for the Baofeng set of radios. So I've got the radio, uh, the charger. Um, I have the PL259 connector because I do have a mag mounted antenna. But then I also have the uh, collapsing uh, full size antenna. So this is great for two meters and uh, 440. Uh, megahertz and uh, I've got FRS GMRS programmed on here as well as all the repeaters in my area as well as some of the uh, first responder uh, frequencies as well so I can monitor things like um, highway patrol going into the glove box got a few items here so I have an emergency blanket I've got a whole bunch of maps from my area uh, an old uh, streamlight, a glow stick, and then I had some extra Advil in there. In the uh, center console, I have an extra extended magazine for my carry pistol. Again, this works uh, perfectly in my Glock 43. It does not work in the 43X, but it doesn't hurt to have some an extra magazine nearby. Uh, I've got a tourniquet for quick access. And then uh, this piece of kit is basically a uh, center auto punch. This is used to break the glass if I need to. And then I also have my, I'm going to screw this up. I think this one's the Leatherman Mutt. But the primary reason I have it is that it has a seatbelt cutter tool. So this will allow me to get out of the car if I need to, if I'm rolled over and need to break, cut the seatbelt and break the glass. And then I have a handmade a trauma kit. Um, so as you can see here, it's basically just another cat tourniquet. It's got some uh, packing gauze. It has all the things you would expect in, uh, a or in a, I guess a, gosh. Oh, that's better. I can feel the caffeine now working. Um, so everything you would expect in a trauma kit. So it has an Israeli bandage and all those cool things. Um, I don't know if I'm missing anything. Yeah, guys, so let me know. Oh, yes, I'm missing one thing. So there is some redundancy. Um, I always carry my everyday carry bag. I did do a video on this. Uh, but this has everything I absolutely need uh, anywhere I go. So it does complement my get-home bag. Um, and as I told you guys before, occasionally I will also throw my full-size go bag there. So I've got sometimes up to three replicas in a lot of places. So be strong, be safe, and uh, be prepared. And guys, um, let me know what you think about the channel. I'm happy to change direction. Right now I'm vacillating between a lot of MCOM, like emergency communications, ham radio stuff, um, some homesteading stuff. I've got some water projects I'm working on, some solar projects. Um, I didn't want to get too much into like the 2A stuff or uh, personal protection. Um, but as you can see, guys, I do believe in 2A. And now that we're back in Arizona, I love having my real big boy uh, loadout kit with my plate carrier, my full-size magazines again. All right, guys, enough rambling. Uh, take care. Bye.